Why, hello. My name is Brendan, and I'm a tour guide at the Alberta Legislature. I'm here to tell you a story about a man, a province, and an epoch. On your recent or upcoming tour of the Alberta Legislature, you either have learned or will learn about the speaker, the person who leads all of the Assembly's debates, and wears these funny clothes, and gets to sit in that chair down there, but... I'm not allowed to sit in that chair. The speaker is the person who has the power to tell even a politician when they are allowed to speak. And trust me, that's a lot of power. Maybe your tour went or will go past this portrait. But probably not, because we keep these tucked away on the fourth floor and uh, no tours really go past them. But this is a man worth talking about. Charles Wellington Fisher was the first speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Alberta. I like Fisher because the highs and the lows of his life were direct signs of the time that he was living in. In 1906, when the first meetings of Alberta's legislature were taking place here at Mackay Avenue School, Fisher was the one leading them. Alberta was a new province then, so if you can imagine all this land, unsettled, being given away for free, you can imagine why people would be flocking here by the thousands. Fisher came out a little bit earlier though, when the province wasn't a province yet, it was still part of the Northwest Territories. And like so many others before him, he became a rancher. But he also became a businessman and a politician. Look, there he is right there, on the Northwest Council, representing Banff. He wanted them to be the capital. Banff isn't the capital. Things were looking pretty good for our boy Charles. In 1908, he got married, and he promised his wife, Helen, that he would build her a castle. Now, ladies, I've read one or two fairy tales in my time where it does happen, but usually, if a man tells you he's gonna build you a castle, but he did manage to build her a sandstone mansion on the western frontier with a view of the Rocky Mountains. Which was pretty much the 1900s equivalent of a castle anyway. It's important to remember that in many ways the early 1900s were all about opulence and fancy things. Women wore giant hats and the Alberta legislature was the type of architecture that they were into. I mean, this is an era where mustache cups were a thing. This tea was delicious. And I didn't even get my mustache wet. Class distinction was a big deal, even in Alberta where ties to the king and to England remained quite strong. So when Charles and Helen threw lavish parties at their sandstone mansion in Cochrane, Alexander and Maddie Rutherford were known to attend. First premier of Alberta, no big deal. People thought the Fishers were pretty awesome. This obsession with opulence and class meant that at times debates in the legislature were quite heated. In one meeting of the Legislative Assembly, when the members decided to send their condolences to the widow of King Edward VII, another member stood up and suggested that they extend those condolences to the families of some miners who had lost their lives on the job. The members were so outraged that they stood up and started throwing their ink bottles and their pens at this member. How dare you mention the king and some miners in the same breath. Fisher had to stand up and stop them. Although stories like this sound ridiculous, that was the attitude of the time. But these concerns about opulence would soon be replaced by concerns about the First World War. These names of Alberta civil servants who passed away in the war are reminders of the lives that were lost and the grief that was caused by the war. Fisher didn't fight in the war, but he did lead many debates concerning it, including one that would see Roberta McAdams become the first woman in the British Empire to introduce legislation and then have that legislation passed. By 1918, people hated the war. They saw the pre-war lifestyle as stuffy and having led to the conflict. Women got rid of their giant hats and they changed them for smaller ones and shorter haircuts. The war also left Alberta in an economic depression and with a drought in the south. This led to a change in political climate as well. The Liberal Party that Rutherford and Fisher were a part of was on its way out and would soon be replaced by the United Farmers of Alberta. Richard Reed, you're not in this shot. Oh, there he is. Without his opulence and his successful ranch, Fisher couldn't be the man that the aughts had made him. Then, as if to give his story a fitting conclusion, 
history sent one more world event to finish him off. The Spanish flu killed more people than the First World War did, and Charles Fisher was one of them. He died in 1919. Fisher's portrait says that he was speaker until 1920, which is either a mistake or it means that even though he was dead, Fisher was still a boss. At least until the assembly chose someone else. If you want to learn more about the Alberta Legislature, or if you want to take one of our free tours, because they happen every single day, except for Christmas Day, New Year's Day, and Good Friday, check out our website at www.assembly.ab.ca.